Well, hello, hello, everybody. Oh, my goodness. We are live, Karen. We are live, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, we sure are. And we're so happy that we are live and that we get to come straight to you. We got a great guest today. Tony Rodriguez is in the house and he has so much to bring, but I'm not going to tell you about that yet. But hey, if you haven't joined the Patreon you should. Last night we had our monthly meeting. It was awesome. We had a lot of conversations in depth and that's where we get to hang loose and really ask Karina the questions that maybe you've been afraid to ask uh, in your circles or, or, you know, in the system maybe. So uh, join, you can go to uh, the quest for truth with Karina Pataki.com and sign up there and also get her books and uh, just get the itinerary, what Karina's getting ready to do. So we'll talk about that more after the show, but back to you, Karina. Wow. Well, you guys, you guys come on, hop on. Uh, I just want to welcome all of our viewers from uh, around the world. Uh, I know we're going to get some also from, um, Eastern Europe from Romania. Uh, I think we're getting, uh, Karen, quite a uh, large audience of international that we have not yes. had before. And this is very exciting. So welcome, everybody. Please like, share um, this video and subscribe if you have not subscribed. Um, if you enjoyed this, you know, again, share it with your loved ones. You guys, I'm so honored and, you know, I feel so honored every time I'm able to bring an incredible guest. Um, but at times, you know, my heart just is full of joy when I actually know the guest that um, that I'm bringing, when I've had the opportunity to spend just some time and meet them face to face. And Tony is just one of those incredible guests. You know, I, I just want to I want to introduce this incredible man. He is a kind very kind, very, very loving man, yet a man that's full of power, knowledge, and a very bold and loving voice of truth in this disclosure that is happening right now on our planet. And so I want to welcome Tony. Tony, welcome. Oh my gosh, it's so hello. awesome to have you. Hi, everybody. Hi, ladies. Hello, hello. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. It's so good to have you back. I'm so excited to have you with us. Um, so you guys, before we jump in with Tony, for those of you, because again, I said that, you know, we have um, a new uh, group of people, a new audience also that I'm sure you've never heard of Tony. A lot of you have, but some of you have not that have just kind of jumped in and started following us. And I wanted to share a little bit about Tony's remarkable, remarkable life and his experiences. And then we will take it, give it back to Tony to kind of break some, some things down. But uh, Tony Rodriguez was abducted as a young boy by the not so good ETs. And eventually he ended up in the secret space program in the 20 and back secret space program. Now, Unfortunately, Tony was being used at first as a child, as a sex slave with other children. And he underwent brutal, brutal, horrific training for the assignment that laid ahead for him as he was brought into this secret space program, the 20 and back. Now, during his secret, uh, the secret space program, Tony worked as a cargo officer on cargo ships that were ships within the solar system dropping cargo off at various bases and bases including the moons of other planets one of them being one of the moons of saturn so um tony is you know he's a speaker again he's a powerful voice of truth very loving and he is also an author so he wrote two books and we're going to talk about a third book coming up. But uh, his first book is uh, Series Colony Cavalier. And the second one is Project Star Maker. What a remarkable, remarkable story and life, uh, Tony, you have. So uh, welcome again. And thank you for being so brave. You are very brave, Tony, and speaking these things and sharing uh, these things that I know were not easy to share. To share. Thank, 
Uh, it's a great um, it's a great intro for people that don't know my story. It's a bit much to take, you know, and I understand that. And I always I always tell people, you know, go don't don't take it from me. I'm not the only one. There have been other people that have come forward that have experienced this a the secret space program and the 20 and back technology that it that really explains it all. And the the thing about my testimony is that in the first year, so, so for people that don't know, they take you and for whatever exotic uh, medical technology they have, they have you for 20 years. So you're in these programs, you actually are abducted and live for 20 years and it's capped at 20 year increments. So for your sanity or some kind of, there's a rule about it, but then they can put you back in time and in the original body and then put you back in your bed the same night. Right? So that's, Totally unbelievable. Not even not even sci-fi does this amount of, of yeah. technology. Not even sci-fi assumes that kind of technology, but that's the case. They're taking people. You're gone for an hour or two out of your bed at night, out of your room. They have free labor for 20 years or whatever, whatever they need, the soldiers or workers or doctors, whatever it is. And they put you right back. And so it's a really beneficial thing for ETs and species that have this technology to have an entire planet of people that are defenseless against being taken and accessible. So, so that's Tony, really our. Like, that's really so like for you, for instance, so, so you guys can kind of get the picture. Um, so they, they take, they took you 20 years. You, they, you, they used you for 20 years. And when they put you back, they literally put you back in the exact moment in time when they took you. So for your parents didn't, you know, That's you right. were on the school. Teachers weren't, you know, you were there, right? Well, I was, I was changed though. My parents noticed my behavior difference the next day. I went to school. I forgot where the bathroom was. I asked the teacher where's the bathroom. So I was different. But yes, the people. That's the first question. If you were gone twenty years, where were your parents? Where were the where were the, the outrage? I was taken on my best guess is April fifteenth, nineteen eighty two. Okay. I was ten years old. And I woke up on April 16th, Friday morning, this, you know, the next morning. And, and I felt I had, I had the, the sensation of not being in my bedroom for 20 years. I woke up totally dis disoriented with my mom saying, hurry up, get down here. You're going to be late for school. And I was gone for 20 years. And I lived, I lived from 10 years old to 30. I had a life. I had been through several programs. The thing that was, a blessing, a double-edged sword, which was a blessing and a curse. And our blessings are our curses and our curses become our blessings. It's believe it. Yeah. The thing yeah. that was a blessing for me is that the first few years, six to eight years, uh, I was on earth. So I was stationed, I was in uh, annual current Ridgecrest, California in the beginning with the very first stop was at it's clandestine, um, a black project, which I found the paperwork and I went there and found a lot of evidence then Seattle, then Peru. So these places on earth, when I got my memories back in 2015, uh, I, you know, most people don't know about places on like most people right now, if I say, where's, do you know where uh, Puerto Tehuantinsuyo, Peru is? Nobody, it's a small river town in the jungle. Nobody knows where it is. So I woke up and had memories of this town before I knew it existed. And then I went and looked and there, lo and behold, it was. And then the house in Seattle. And I, I had de intimate, detailed memories and then went and found that it existed. So there's so you corroborating have, evidence. Yeah, you have. Yeah, the, yeah, this is this is phenomenal. And and Tony, um, talk about you. Before we came on, you were mentioning uh, about you are a lot around uh, Jupiter. Um, yes. So kind of share with us what that's like. What was that like? What did you see? Um, I'm sorry, I'm reading a little bit of the chat. It's really good oh, yeah. stuff. Two people I know. Hi, everybody. Well, so after the time on Earth, I was sold to the military was the exact words. And I ended up, I went through the moon for retraining. There's uh, quite a bit of infrastructure and, and people living on Mars, subterraneanly, underground. And then I was sold to something called the Ceres Colony Corporation, which is on Ceres, which was ran by breakaway Deutsch or Germans or Europeans, whatever you want to call it. I, you know, I hate using the trigger words, but basically a German culture that broke away from right around World War II. And they made it into space. And there was about a quarter million people living inside the planetoid Ceres with artificial gravity because it's very small. It's a dwarf planet. Mm. 
and it was a corporation. It was the Series Colony Corporation or Series Colony Gieselschaft, as they would call it. It was written on the wall. And I ended up working on a ship as maintenance for uh, seven or eight years. And then being, that ship was decommissioned and I was promoted to cargo engineer. And that's what I did. And we did car, we did interstellar trade missions with ETs all over the galaxy and in nearby galaxies. So, you know, like on TV and in the movies, how it's a long trip to go to the next star, you know, across the galaxy. It wasn't. We went very far and we were home every day. We were right wow. back at the base every day for dinner. So it was uh, instantaneous trips were very far away. Uh, I was a cargo engineer and we would go to Jupiter. We would begin our week or our assignments and we would go. There are, there are extraterrestrial bases around Jupiter. That, and Jupiter is a big place. So, the, you know, in orbit around Jupiter without, I forget how many satellites, 64 moons or, you know, there's a lot up there. There's a lot. Of, they're all basically have a can parked on them. Um, inside Ganymede, there are huge caverns. There are huge bases inside Ganymede that is a, like a diplomatic structure. We never landed there, but we would fly over it and uh, meet other ships there. There is a base in orbit, like a like a space station that's in the vicinity of Jupiter, kind of kind of far away. So Jupiter is, you know, it's not very close to it, and it's a trading outpost. So you can go there and list it that you want to purchase or or sell goods from your culture with literally billions of other available cultures and you can go through and, and ask if they want to trade when you get an invite so we it's it's the etiquette of space flight was to get permission before you entered their system you could be hostile and especially at the level of technology that we were we were very kind of low tech in the scheme, grand scheme of things and so we would go to this base and they would put out their messages and get invitations to come and then we had packages that we would drop off that had like sampler packages of they were good size too you know um we would drop those off and then a, a week or two the negotiations would take place through through that base on jupiter they had to go there to check for the messaging and so we'd go there on monday morning and we'd get our stops for the week we'd have a briefing and then we would go sometimes four or five different planets a day where we were trading we would drop off things we went to diego garcia in the indian ocean quite often and picked up goods there from the earth that were from the earth uh, manufactured here and take them and trade them and we went in the kuiper belt they had storage facility they had ice um big chunks of of like asteroids out there that were hollowed out and they, they were warehouses because wow. they didn't have a lot of space on series that every time they built a new place on series people moved into it so they were expanding so i know that's very hard for people to hear, hear it for the first time but that was the reality i remembered and like I said, I was able to corroborate my time on the places in on Earth. I went to the house in Seattle. I went to the literally to the building in Cal in Ridgecrest that the project. I found the paperwork and the funding and the Joint Senate Arms Committee inquiry inquiry in '82. I found that I, there's a paper trail and all the technology. Everything lines up. And so, if my memories, like of the Earth time are accurate then i have to trust my memories of space as well one last thing is i called out the okada crater uh salt deposits i i was before when nasa first got there in 2016 they thought it was a different chemical i said no that's salt and yes. then in 2020 they concluded that it was salt and i was confirmed about that so i have a i have a bit of evidence i have a you know i have evidence behind my testimony there's so many people that don't and uh, i'm just blessed that way yeah, but uh, there's a lot of people that are just as genuine as me, but they they were taken straight to space. They can't prove it. They can't they can't come in. So it's a shame. But this is a reality. They're taking people very often, millions of people, and uh, there's a great deal of infrastructure in our solar system and nearby. And once we're on that level, we're you know once there's a disclosure, we're going to get to that level very quickly. It, it'll happen fast. Yeah. Now, Tony, why are they taking certain children? Why? You know, why not, why not, uh, why a certain group of children? What are they looking for? Genetics. So I, I don't know. I wasn't told if it was the technology that puts you back or the portal technology, you know, the, the they called them bridges. They called it bridging, not portaling. Mm. So the bridge technology of travel, but uh, it was hard on you. So when we use the natural 
portals or bridges, um, you would get sick for 10 or 15 minutes. You'd get nauseous. And so they said it was a, there was a genetic, you know, not everybody can go into space in this travel this way. I, and I don't know if it's the system for putting you back. I don't know. But there was, was a genetic requirement. They tested me and we had to wait for 15 or 20 minutes for the results before they took me, before they before they took me and into the 20 years. So there's a genetic requirement. The other thing is they take children because they're trainable. It's simple. You know, an old dog doesn't learn new tricks. So they take they take young kids. The my labs, I work with people, thousands of people reach out to me. I worked with them. I have a stack of of you know uh files that I've made on people, individuals. And it seems that the my labs, the United States military version, likes to take kids when they're two, even prenatally. They take the mom while they're in the womb and start doing the genetics. And then, you know, when they're two, when they're four, and they're getting these kids ready for the time that they're taken around the age of 12. Typically, it's 12-ish. You know, uh, there seems to be a bottleneck at 12 for girls, and there seems to be boys are eight, anywhere from 8 to 17 before they go. But um, they, have a, they have a system for what they're doing for, for taking people. And it, it makes sense. Like, it's literally our highest law is to take children. Yeah. from home but they they justify it by saying that they're not going to remember it so all of the bad all of the abuse when, when they were abusing me i would i would say how can you do this and yeah. they would say well, you're not going to remember it anyway so they morally justify it by saying they're going to erase your memory for one and for two children at that age are or are, are malleable and uh trainable so they take you as a child take you as a 10 year old or a 12 year old and train you for four years and you're a fit you're a fit capable 16 year old to an 18 year old right so in yeah. those years of training and getting ready to be a soldier or a doctor or whatever you qualify for and then they have you for the next 24 years 20 year something years 22 years of or excuse me 12 years of solid service you know yeah. um so yeah i think that's that's my best guess on that yeah and yeah karen you had a question well, yeah, I, I think, you know, you asked the question that they take the children. My question is, did they know to pick the specific children? And did they know something about the parents? Because he just said, you know, they were already testing the mothers before the children were born. So there's a real there's a real phenomenon um, that goes on. How am I doing? Is my connection good? It's very good. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Very good. There's a real phenomenon of people being so there are different age groups of people that work with me that that um I, I draw that come and say, look, I saw your interview and I think I went through the same thing. Please talk to me. Yes. And there are different seem to be different age groups and the, the older ones, I'm fifty two, the older ones that are my age and older, um, seem to be taken first generation military or they lived near a military base. They had a father in the military that did that had access to research or bigger program, you know, secret programs, or a grandpa, or they live near one. The kids nowadays are the grandkids being taken. So, in other words, the military had access to the technology originally, probably from 1947 on, and they looked for personnel, and so they said, "Well, we need people with this genetic. We need blood tests. You, all you guys, test all the soldiers." because they've already signed away their medical rights as a soldier. And then they get the ones, and then so they keep an eye on them, and their children have the genetic markers. So that's their first go-to. And then we see things all the time wanting to test our DNA. And, you know, so the family tree is relevant. It, people that are taken, they're, 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 my, my mom said that she has saw a UFO. It's all the time. It's, it's more than a coincidence, very often. So it's a family, it's a family thing. I have I have strong suspicions my daughter was taken when she was 12. There were strange events around that time, and she has all of a sudden woke up with a personality change and drawing pictures of ETs and pyramids. And so she completely changed, and I had to sit her down and talk to her about it back then. Um, but it's a genetic thing, and it makes sense when you look at when you look at from the top down on where do we get people to, to staff this base, this moon base. Um, they're looking for they're looking for the genetics, and it makes sense to, once they get somebody to watch their whole family tree. The other thing is, I've had people say, "Well, oh, you were a slave labor, and they did all this. Why didn't they just kill you? Why they bother bother putting you back?" Mm -hmm. And you don't cut down the apple tree. You wait. You know what I mean? Like I have children. My children are 
my daughter is who's been married for a short time is expecting by the way i'm going to be a grandfather thank you very oh much my gosh, congratulations <laughs> yesterday i found out yesterday wow so th that's well, an exclusive congratulations. here <laughs> that's awesome awesome yeah well, i'm so happy for them they're a great couple yeah very very nice so <clears throat> tony um the question is let me ask you this people that are watching you and something in them is being triggered they're remembering reoccurring dreams or they they have a feeling that they have time that they just don't remember what happened and they're trying to piece things together and they're thinking now maybe this happened to me how what can they do to start their journey on maybe remembering and putting these puzzle pieces together because i know you help people you've helped people before so what can they do what can you tell them so there's a lot there's a lot of the perfect storm that got my memories back. Yeah. So number one, I'm scatterbrained all the yeah. time. Like if I like like I showed up at the last minute here. So my really, I tell people all the time, like, yeah, Tuesday sounds good, and then I forget stuff, and I'm scrambling. Like my short term memory is terrible. Yeah. Wow. Naturally, my long term memory is gifted. So I remember things when my, when I hang out with my sister. I'm like, don't you remember that when we were kids? I'm I seem to remember things the wrong ways. So. Yeah. There's that for one. And there are other there are other circumstances. And I wanted to remember. I deeply wanted to remember. So people in the programs, there are people that are in these programs that have soft that have seen great, great Trump traumatic things. And they don't want to remember. They put take all my memory. I don't want to not want to remember this. They're treated bad, poorly. And so there that's a factor in getting your memories back. Mm -hmm. Um when I got my memories back, I wanted more. Because and I'm still remembering. There are still details that I remember. I got I have a, I have a lot of it, but not all of it. And um, I want more. So there's exercises you do in the morning that you do. I have the memory course that um, I I set up. Um, I was I tried all kinds of stuff. The most beneficial trait, if you want to get your memories back, is to log the bits and pieces. So what happens is. People see my people see my information and they go, oh, whoa. And it starts to make sense what they've they've had bits and pieces of memories all along or bits and pieces of odd events that didn't make sense all along. They've had them their whole life. Like, you know, I just kind of remember being in a room and there were like soldiers and there was like an E.T. I, I don't I don't know why, but oh, well. And they just carry on with their life. It doesn't make any sense. People have these memories and they just carry on because what, what are you going to do about that? What do you do with that? And really nothing. But that is, an, in fact. A memory and so when you get a bunch of them it's hard they're not in linear order and so what happens is when you really explore one memory and start delve into it and you sit down with somebody and even a hypno regression even on that level um, when you sit down and delve into one memory you're not considering the others right and then a day goes by and you remember the other one and you remember so what i'm saying is you need to get them down on paper in a timeline for fashion in a linear fashion that makes sense. And I always tell people like, how old do you, how old do you perceive you were in this memory? So you were in a room with a bunch of soldiers and an ET at the end. How, how old do you feel you were? Could you see your hands? Could you, could you, how old were you very young? And most people can, can flesh that out. Most people can say, wow, I remember I was pretty young. Okay. So that goes here on your timeline. So let's keep that there soldier memory and build it out. And that's, that's the key is, Having somewhere for the new memories to land, yeah. Having a space for the new memories to go, is the most important thing. It really is, and that made all the difference for me in the beginning. And then the other thing is the the push and pull action of memory. Mm -hmm. Long term memory works exactly with push and pull, and I, I, I I've said this the hundreds of times. Um, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, I said the hundreds of times. So when you try to remember a song. And you can't remember it. You go, you think about it, and there's a there's an action, there's a muscle act. You go, what is that song? What is that song? Yeah. And when you stop trying to remember and give it a little bit of time, your subconscious is still looking it up. You go, ah, well, it'll come to me. The next thing you know, five or ten minutes later, you go, oh, I remember the song now. So that is the technique. That push and pull action is. I tell people, work on your time. Get up in the morning, look at your timeline, try to remember more, and then don't purpose quit thinking about it. Go on about your day, and later on in the day, you may get more and keep and repeat, rinse and repeat. Do it every morning, and the memory you will, you will. I guarantee you will get more memories. So, 
That is a question that that is something that works. Yeah, that's very good. So we had a question. I don't I'm not sure why I am not seeing any comments on my end. Uh, Karen is seeing them uh, and I'm sure you are. Tell me. Yeah, I see so, comments. OK, good, because on mine, it's I'm not seeing anything. So there was, there was, yeah, question. Uh, Karen, can you put that back up or how does it work so we can see it? Or what was the question? I didn't see one if my mic is uh, clear now. <laughs> I didn't see one. And uh, but I've asked everybody, if you do have a question, post it. And then sometime during the show, we'll get Tony to answer it for you. And uh, so let's do a Q&A like towards the end. Yeah. Well, do that? Sure. Yeah. yeah okay, let's, cool. uh, and yeah, send your questions. I think I saw one that uh, she said that her memories uh, keep recurring in a dream or something like that. Um, Tony, so, that. recurring memory. So, you know, at first, firstly, you have to you have to temper it and say, you know, you have to say it could be a dream. Some dreams are very profound, you know, like it's a dream, but it's so realistic and profound. When they reoccur, that's either so that becomes either a dream that is an issue that needs to be resolved or a memory. Yeah. So the memories reoccur. Your memories that are blocked are accessible in the theta state right before you wake up. So right before you wake up in the morning, that's when, and I was getting those all my whole life. I was getting the, my memories back of my time right before I'd wake up. I'd dream and I'd wake up and go, wait, what the hell was that? And think about it. And they, it was like a reoccurring, the whole thing. Um, it was not a dream, you know, like it was, it was, it was like a dream but slightly the different tinge like like in the, i always say that so if you're if you have a dream that you're not sure if it's a memory or not go back into that dream try to keep it fresh in your mind's eye yes and a, a memory has a has a, a a past and a future if you're remembering it you remember how you got there a dream you just appear you just appear on the beach in your dream zip and you're there and then you appear next to the place you don't walk you don't get in a car and drive away in your dream and sit. It's not linear. Dreams are not linear. Memories are. So That's if you correct. have this, if you if you dreamt it and you feel it's a memory, try to remember how you got there, and see if anything. Play, oh wow, I do remember. I, you know, like you will you will get more on the front and back of the memory, and use the technique like I said first thing in the morning. How did I get there? How did I get there? How did you get? And then do that for five or ten minutes over your coffee, and then just leave it alone for the day, and let your subconscious look it up. Um, yeah. Your subconscious is in touch with, uh, frankly, everything in the universe. Yeah, that's so, so good. Tony, let's shift a little bit because you are doing some amazing, amazing things. Uh, you have uh, your hands in a whole bunch of different projects that are incredible. They're amazing. So let's start. You have something with uh, the remote viewing. You're working on a new book with remote viewing. Um, and then you released your second book uh, called... Um, uh, Project Star Maker. What? The, I love the name. Hello. <laughs> what is that about? First of all, what is that about? This workers off at some point, a few years into my time there. And they take your consciousness. So think about this. It's like cloning. Radical technology is cloning. So the 20 and back may hinge on just all cloning with consciousness transference. So in other words, they, they clone you, but it's kind of a, it's kind of an imbecile or a vegetable even. And they take some of your, you take your consciousness out and, and it drives the clone. Then at the end of 20 years, I know I get the stare, but time travel is possible. So at the end of the 20 years, they put you back in time, put your consciousness back in the original body. All the memories are in the clone. All your memories are waiting for you in your new body. And then they just kill it, take their hardware back out of it, kill it. And then they put you back. They sold us in that regard from series colony as another time. So I was taken and then there was two of me they sold me again, and they, you, they said, you can't do it. And I said, wait, you can't do that. We'll go crazy. It's against the law. And they said, no, it's okay. And it was an ET species that was trading technology to the Ceres Colony Corporation for people to help them get a project back on track. And they were building a star. And instead of a human, I was an adolescent ET that I woke up in a, in a body, and I was there about 10 years. And that was a very distant, very vague and fragmented memory. It was hard to put a story together. And I never really wanted to mention it in series column. It is. It's it's in between Project Star Maker is in between pages 252 and 253 
of mm-hmm. Series Colony Cavalier. That's where that whole story takes place. I, I literally go there and wake up on the next page. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that's what that book's about. And there's kind of a reveal. And then Jackie Kenner, who edited both books, who is one of the most brilliant people I've ever met, and she's crushing it, connections with Jackie. Her Instagram is amazing. She gives psychic stuff, psychic tips on her Instagram. She edited the book and she put in, I think, four or five chapters of her own because we did a show together the same way that you two are. Yes. And after we got off the camera, we'd talk about stuff. She said, how do you know that? I said, well, I remember from uh, Peru. She said, how do you know that? And I said, well, because I was sort of dead. They were putting me under. And it was, I started to tell her things that were exactly like what she had experienced in her medium work and experienced in her training with other professionals. She said, you know, this is exactly, she's like, Tony, this is the story that needs to be told. Yeah. And she kind of twisted my arm into that second book. And I, I want to keep books coming. Books are great and they keep me going. That's the thing is like, if I put it all away and don't have the books, the books are a source of income that justify the time that yes. I put into what I'm doing. So I want to make more books. People eat them up. And yeah, you know, Star Maker, I wa- she cut it down. Uh, she has a way of writing that keeps you reading fast. And oh, so uh, she cut it down. It's just a little book, 160, 180 pages or something. Um, and then I see in the chat somebody somebody uh, was asking about my next book, which will be about remote yeah. viewing and some yeah. of the work we've done. We really pushed some of the things. I, in the research, I, my first... Um, my first assignment in my 20 years was in remote viewing in Project Grow Flame in advanced remote viewing and psychoenergetics research. It was a classified project, and uh, I remember a lot of the things. And so I started a remote view group and a remote influencing group. They're both highly successful, mm-hmm. and I've been doing experiments. The group, we all agree about it, and we 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 test different things out to see what works and what doesn't. And I really just made some really good discoveries. It seems like remote viewing has an avant-garde yes. and an existing society of people that are successful with it. And you know, there's a lot of uh, established, you know, it's like an established, there's a remote viewing establishment. Yes. And so I started my group and I found out a lot of things that are not in publications, that are not in the documents. And uh, so this book is going to kind of talk about that. And remote viewing is, in, we all can do it. Everybody can do it. Um, and it's an important thing because if we, if everybody can remote view, then everything we're told about ESP and psychic abilities and meditation and all of it is false because everybody can do this. So that means we all have, there's a science, there's a, there's a human condition that is not taught to us. Yes. And so that's really the, 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 that's really the core of the book the next book. And I'll, I'll tell the in your current story, which is, which is a great deal of evidence. And it was going to be a great companion. The book after that, well, I'll start working on almost immediately after is going to be the trilogy the finish to the trilogy and of series colony cavalier project it's going to be the story of when i got my memories back oh, so the cool. moment that i got all my memories and i had kind of the recall was in 2015 and it changed my life i was a you know i was a dad working at home you know like i had a lifestyle I lived on maui at the time and uh my life changed and i changed i had to integrate all those memories and i became a different person like in one day i became different yeah, like I integrated yeah. all those experiences and it took me a while to to sort it out. But the story of what I've learned and like meeting you and doing talks and it changed my life and my life is not what it would have been otherwise. And I think that's an interesting story. And I think a lot of it's going to be a bit of a tell all like I, I'm sure to ruffle feathers with it. But you know what I mean? Like, I'll say this. If you don't want people if you don't want people to write badly about you in their book, you shouldn't <laughs> treat them badly. Very true. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> I'll leave that there. I'll just set um, that there. But that's what that book's going to be. And then and then I'm going to go in. Uh, I'll start going into the advanced learning stuff, which is yeah. mind-blowingly, progressing mind-blowingly well. So before we right do now. that, Tony, before we go into that, because I want you to share on that, because last time, you guys, uh, check out the first interview that I did with Tony a few months back last year, probably springtime or so. Again, incredible. He dives more deeper into, you know, his the first book and his experiences and everything. And but, Tony, for people uh, that maybe do not quite understand what remote viewing is, I mean, I think everybody has a kind of an idea. But what exactly would you describe remote viewing? What is it? 
and and then and then the second part is you said everybody can do it just a little bit of examples of that so go ahead uh, go ahead remote with viewing is your mm -hmm. intuition your intuitive self remote viewing is your intuition we all have it so when they researched it the soviets were doing it and the cia was like oh, the government us government was like man the soviets can see what's going on your intuition tells you everything you need to know but what happens is every, your body your mind is running 10 programs at once right now like mm -hmm. seriously i'm sitting here i'm a little hungry i'm thinking about lunch and you know like my feet are cold i'm thinking about my feet being cold i should have got i should oh right here is my shoes <laughs> so you understand how my mind's working i'm also talking to like 70 people in the chat plus you and the people that this is being recorded for yeah. so my mind is not calm right now my intuition is drowned it out. So if I if my intuition is a small, constant, same voice, your intuition is a voice inside your head that tells you, and then you get into grooves where you you listen to that voice and it comes through you and it's mighty. Your intuition, your intuitive self, is connected to your right hemisphere of your brain, which is connected outside of time space. This is the science behind it. There's there's books about it. Sure. And that's the voice. So that's all of us, and we're all talking, and we we take with neutral stance. On the outside so there's no you when you think about your eternal self and somebody stole your somebody stole your candy bar from your lunch box at work and you want to beat them up and you go to your intuitive self and you say what should i do about it and your intuitive self is going to be like what does it matter what do you mean a candy bar you know that was only like one day you're going to be alive for billions of years it's nothing uh, everything or I've been abused badly and all these things like your intuitive self doesn't care. The spirit world is more neutral. Our minds are more neutral. We don't have we don't harbor secrets on that side. We the secrets are for this side in the 3D. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I'm going to get back to the subject. When they started in the 70s to research remote viewing, they had they had evidence of the ESP and human phenomenon through meditative state and they came up with the CRV, the controlled remote view method, a lot of people have invented other ways. There's nuts and bolts that you can use from, you know, antiquity, old. It all hinges on meditation. Meditation shuts off the fact that my I can meditate and not think about my cold feet. I can meditate and, not, and think that I don't care about lunch. And I can meditate and not think about that there's a bunch of people watching that could be hate, laughing at me. I can meditate all that away. And the only thing that's left after a good, solid meditation is that voice. And then you say, show me the target. And you can see and we remote view and we beat the odds every single week we have an average score i have a scourge scoring system from zero to 35. 15 is the threshold of better than one in two hundred and fifty thousand. there is no way that they're guessing this every single week we do it we do it every week we do two targets a week typically and uh, all the all the viewers get is a six digit number I have an envelope. Do I have it right here? Over here. Mm -hmm. This is one of this week's targets. Uh -huh. I don't want to show the number because it can be screwed up that way. But there's it's just a target in an envelope. There's a six-digit number written on it. And I know what's in it. I made the target. And what I did was meditate on the target and make kind of an, write some stuff on a piece of paper in there. I'll, I posted the number on my Patreon group for the remote viewing tier. And they'll all take a minute and meditate and go through the protocols with ideograms and kind of you whittle it away. And, you know, the, you get out of it what you put into it. Some people only have a few minutes a week to do and they have a little short report. Some people do very detailed and draw pictures. And we've had, it's amazing. Um, and then on Sunday, we'll go, I, I go to everybody in a Zoom format and I go, what'd you, what'd you get? And we all share our, we share our viewings with the entire group. And then at the end, I open up the envelope and everybody every week goes <gasps> and we find out even over over the course of the next week that it looks like they got stuff. They looks like they got it wrong. But when we really look at it, they got it right. They get it right. And so for every aspect that they get, they get like two points and up to the 15. And there's a threshold of 15. And we get into the 20s. I think our high score is like 28. Very accurate view. I mean, I've had people on certain circumstances literally draw a picture of the target and we randomize the target so that there's no taking a wild guess that it's always somewhere it's always somewhere you know what i mean ancient aliens it's always puma punko <laughs> no it's not 
So right. sometimes we do, I do, I mix it up. I do small insects, um, atoms, elements, uh, yeah. planets, Jupiter. Uh, we mix it all up so that it's completely random and that the viewer doesn't have any kind of uh, front loading on what to expect. Yes. And uh, keep it simple. So there are other steps. My remote viewing group, we, we don't do all of the advanced protocols. We kind of dabble in them. But we just do like one to three, one to four, uh, you know, phase phase one through four, phase mm -hmm. one to three, because the idea is to not be a remote viewer to where you can spy on the lotto numbers. The idea is to be to know that when all those voices in your mind are going off to know what the intuitive one, the correct one sounds like. If you remote view repeatedly, you hear that boy, you go, you know what? I heard that voice and I, I was raw. I didn't get I got a low score this week, but I swear I heard the other voice telling me about it, that, uh, you know, the correct target. So the next week you do it, and over time, you understand the what the pitch and the volume of your correct intuitive voice is with the practice of remote viewing. And the, That's good. the method of beginning to remote view is the same exact method that psychic mediums do before their medium, tarot card readers do, people that are all of it. it. It's all the same exact method. You have to shut down all the other stuff in your mind that media and really it's worse nowadays because we're scrolling. We have a short attention span from the dopamine addiction. And yep. so as you really want to, in fact, I'll give away a secret. The military program of remote viewers gives their guys dopamine inhibitors so huh. that they don't get dopamine spike throughout the day so that they can easily return to it's a Chinese plan. I forget the name it starts with a Y the dopamine inhibitor and i started what i looked at it and i thought hmm, i'll get some and try it and i thought i like my dopamine i like i like it I, you know i like getting a high score on my video game i like you know cool videos that are dudes doing backflips like i like dopamine so i'm not gonna do i don't i'm not that um devoted to remote yeah. viewing to spying so um, you're, but that, that you're is what the work, works you're utilizing this i love what you're doing because you're utilizing this to teach people how to hear the, the true voice, the voice that uh, they need to connect with their intuition, because you're right, there's so many voices and it's like, which one is right, which one is, you know, and, and I love what you're doing. And that's how through that training, like you said, everybody can do this. So Tony, talk, talk about that, because we all have that voice, that inner voice, that intuition, if we just learn to trust it and listen to it. So talk about that, please. Sometimes it's loud. It happens to everybody. Everybody has a story. Like even the most diehard skeptics have a story of, you know, it's weird. I was walking. Like how many people got off the plane before it, before it crashed? Mm. Like everybody heard the voice or it was time to go. They didn't hear the voice was like, have a seat, buckle up. Because your voice tells you, knows what the future is. The, when you go outside of time space, it, you have access to everything. All the future. There's no distance. There's no forward or backward. So that your voice is out there and your higher, it's your higher self for to, hypnosis. People call it your higher self. Yes. Whatever you want to do, the science is there and it's sound. And like I said, we, we, we're beating the odds every single week. So anybody tells you remote viewing is not possible or it's a trick or something is absolutely not true. Um, but that intuitive voice is there when you need to hear it. It's very loud. We've all had that. We've all yeah. had that inner voice go, oh, I've got to stop. Oh, I got to stop. You know, you get your yeah. voice that takes over and steers, nudges you. It's there all day long anyway, but we just ignore it because we're in our left hemisphere of our brain takes over when you wake up and you get your coffee and you come out of the alpha state and the theta state. You get your coffee, that part of your brain takes over and it's time to get on the clock, right? So it's time yeah. to get your day going. And that part of your brain navigates the 3D better than the right hemisphere does, you know? Yeah. So the voice lets it happen. And gets you, and you re, you kind of report and get your thing when you're sleeping. That's what the dreams are. That's what that's that's what that is. You can program yourself to answer questions while you're dreaming, while you're sleeping, because that you could, you know. Um, but that intuitive voice is there all the time, and if you want to want to access it, you can. But most people, well, how many people, how many times in your life have you been told to listen to your intuitive voice from the mainstream, from at school? or on TV or in a commercial. Oh, just stop and use your intuitive voice. They don't do that because they're using it. Yeah. Because the people that own the commercial makers and the TV makers and the media, they are using all this stuff for themselves. They have all the data that I uncovered, you know, um, 
but they don't want us to have it because we'd be competition. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that voice has saved my life quite a few times. So it's that's a, right. Yeah, it really literally has saved my life quite a few times. Uh, and it was very loud when it was speaking to me, it was very loud. Yeah. So and it's everybody, yeah. and most people just brush it off like, oh well, okay, back to back to the la la la. All right, back to the back to my life. I mean, you know, people have absolute miracles happen yeah. in traffic and you go, whoa, that was close. And then go right back to the on radio and act like nothing happened. And yeah. so, you know what I mean? Like that's supposed to not exist in the, in the, in the sanitized version of, of reality that we live in. Stuff like that isn't supposed to happen, but it happens all the time to all of us. 100% of us. I think people, some people, people are looking for this big boom too. this like, boom, you know, where it can be very mild, you know, <laughs> yes. especially in, in the realm, like, you know, we've, um, you know, talk to a lot of people in the mystic movements, Christian movements, and they're always like, I don't hear, I don't hear, you know, like, and, and he's like, you don't have a gut feeling or whatever. And, and they're like waiting for this big push, yeah. you know, this big thing to happen. And it's, it's yeah. not like that. <laughs> sign and the room's full of signs already, mm -hmm. you know, it's like yeah. it's one sign after another and go, well, I guess I'm not getting a sign because, if right. you want to ignore it, you will. Right. And we're programmed to ignore it. Like, don't underestimate the amount of programming right. we have in us already, you know, myself included. Uh, yeah, there's, sorry, there's I'm trying to keep my eye. The is perking up, so it's good stuff. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, so now, uh, Tony, we have a, a, about what, 15 minutes or so. So let's talk about the your education um, pro program that you've started on last time we started talking it's phenomenal so let's talk about yeah, the we'll DNA. so go for it I first want to say hello thanks for coming um it's been a rough road so we started out i thought that it was going to be easiest to build a preschool learning course for kids mm -hmm. so pre preschool prep course that would be a, a marketable product that we could get in front of superintendents and really a big audience and for kids and what happens is Kids can't read. So one of the integral parts of the software require, you know, works better with reading. And then when you get into really drawing it up from scratch, kids don't, um, children don't test the same. So you're not yes. testing if they learned that the banana was yellow or the apple was red. You're not testing that. You're learning their creativity when they go, oh, yeah, I saw the yellow banana and I drew a basket in the kitchen. I drew a kitchen around it. It's like it's like they're, you're looking at their mind. You really need a clinical psychologist to build one. So it turned out that the preschool course, after I put a lot of resources into it, was the hard one. So we learned a lot from it, but it was the harder course to do. So now I'm working with a company in corporate training, and we have kind of a client lined up, and we're moving into that regard, and we're using AI in our presentations with the software. The, originally, the 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 company was software and I, a software idea of just presenting media, but it's morphed into something else. So now that I'm looking into other forms of um, things that boost your intelligence and things that boost your ability to learn quickly, I've got like four layers of it now that we're researching. And there's some really, some really fringe stuff that I'm learning from other people in my field from the GSIC crowd, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Elena and um, Dan Willis, et cetera. And mm -hmm. we're picking up a lot of the work that some of those guys did um, back in the past. And there are things that are applicable to my system that actually uh, are going to fit quite well. So it's come a long way and um, we're starting to really get to get down to the grindstone right now. And we're building out we're building out a couple courses. I'm going to I'm going to make a small um, like an institute thing that has gardening and nutrition and finances these basic courses that school mucks up, they're little. They're going to be little one-hour modules and two-hour modules on on eat simple stuff. And then I'll have a subscription for everybody. And then I'm going to put some woo stuff. In. I'm going to have a remote viewing one that I'm building oh, into the awesome. software too. I actually um, there's a huge demand for it, and I got to. And what happened is the remote viewing class got big, and it's hard to keep. It's hard to manage once it gets over 20 people. I mean, it's or over 15 people really. It's it's tough to do a Zoom call and have everybody share their stuff. It's like you you get shorted, so I have to break it up. But uh, I'm going to automate that, and I'm going to use the software for that. But 
anyhow, we're, we're going to build an incarnation of that. And then we have a corporation, a Fortune 800 company that we're working with. And we'll be spending the next year, up to two years working and building that. And it's their own industry. You know, people come out of college and they know the laws of their what they're doing for their job, be it insurance or sales or whatever it is. But they don't know the the secrets of the trade. And yes. so we're building we're building a course that'll be quick for new guys to be get up to speed so mm -hmm. that they don't have to pay somebody that's a top earner to teach them and mentor them. So we're in the middle of that right now and it's it's going really good. So it's promised it, I do foresee a time when I'll not be doing books and talking on the road and I'll be doing, you know, it'll take over as the full time in my life once that once it launches and goes full time. Um, but right now it's kind of like in an R and D phase and the early phases of it. And it's very, very good stuff. It's very good. So when, when, when do you foresee possibly this, uh, starting, what are you as far as time frame? Oh, well, so where are we at 24? So we'll probably have an operational course at, by the end of the year for that, for oh, that company, cool. corporate one, we'll have an operational one for them. Um, there's a few, there's a lot of moving parts in it and a few things that are dependent on just the just the dollars and cents of it all so right, right now you know it's it's uh cobbled together but we, there'll be a, a software build out and then we'll go into that but i i'm hoping um i'm also on the road a lot this year yeah thank god uh for g -Sick in denver i can't wait to go back to denver i found this great taco spot there <laughs> but um i'm gonna have a conference in sedona there's one in sedona there's i'm going to france i'll be alongside elena and john charles and chris Hassan's conference I'm very honored yeah. to do that. Yeah. And I, w I would love to do some in person. Um, you know, I'm love to see the sites there. I've never been to Europe. So I'm very blessed oh, to do awesome. that. I'm going to Journey to Truth. I'm going to uh, Austin, Texas for the uh, so for this uh, uh, the eclipse in April. Yes. I'm on yes. the road a lot this year. So what I'm saying is when I trip finish up the travel from this year, um, I'm going to really double down and and like I'm roughing in those those smaller courses right now. But mm -hmm. as soon as those are over, it we've got it down. So we had a hard time sorting out what media we were going to use. But we've got now we've got AI that can just build stuff so fast. It's like, you know, it's like the girl with the AI voice and she can. Hello, this is your <laughs> course on geometry. Welcome. And so we, I really pinned all that down and got all that purchased. Yeah, now. that's good. So we we are we it's the the difference in output of us taking a piece of paper with data on it and making a lesson plan is lightning fast compared to what we way we were doing it just a few months ago. So it's come a long way, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it's coming. So it's, it's, this is what I'm going to do in my life. Um, this is wonderful. You know, for the rest. I'm not going to let, I'm not going to let what happened to me in my abduction define me. So I've learned from it. I, I got fortunate. I got my memories back and I got a lot of wisdom from that time. And I had a lot of tips into one way direction or another that have led me to think differently than people, but I'm not going to let it define me. Hopefully by the time, by the time I uh, put down the tools and go to rest that you guys all look back on me for being somebody that was a teacher and yeah. not of, of that. Yeah. And you're doing a phenomenal job, Tony. Phenomenal job. Um, Thank you. Hey, Tony, uh, how can people connect to your classes? Because I'm sure there's people on here that would love to take it. So, um, oh, you mean the remote viewing stuff. So you can get through yeah. it through TonyRodericks.com or my Patreon which is patreon.com slash talks with Tony. So that's the name of the show. I, when, when I get the automated remote viewing course, I, what a, my, my concept is that you join the remote viewing course, you sign up, pay, and then you get a month's worth of videos to learn the basics. And then you come into the live mm -hmm. groups mm -hmm. because I, I, I anticipate it growing. And then I'm going to, uh, well, I, I won't talk about that yet. Um, I'll sort that out on my end. But it, there's going to be two or three different group slots, like one that, you know, fills up and these people are in this one. And so that because what's happening is the, the more effort people put into it, the better they get at it. So you yes. get out of you get out of it what you put into it. Absolutely. Right. And uh, so some people are getting, we, you know, we classify them. Some people are getting good in, and some people energetically don't want to look at the targets that are questionable. So we had a missing person. Somebody somebody contacted us and said, look, this my buddy's daughter has gone missing. Can mm -hmm. you remote view and find her? And mm -hmm. I went, oh, God, you know, um, OK. You know, like I wanted to do that. But again, I'm putting this pressure on people that are just trying to learn their intuition. And mm -hmm. so 
I had to invent a way for them to opt out if it was a um, sensitive target. That girl was recovered. She was catfished by a guy, a guy, uh, an older man posed as a 15 year old boy online and met her at the mall and kidnapped her. And they found his IP. They went back to the messages and found. So we did our remote view and we had a lot of accurate information, but the FBI had already recovered her by the time we got the information to him. It was fast. She was not gone long and it was unsettling. Anyhow, so in the advanced group, it'll be people that are more willing to look at things like crime scenes. So when you look at some of the leaders in, in remote viewing, they're doing great work, like yes. the Farsight Institute. They're doing very aggressive targeting. They're looking at like, you know, Epstein and they're looking at the crucifixion of Christ. Like they're looking at these aggressive, pinnacle, high energetic, high yes. energy targets. Yes. And so that takes a lot of work on the viewer. You have to be a really adept viewer, not, not a, you know, you, you can look at these targets and see you're, you're literally seeing a murder. Yeah, you're witnessing a murder, and you that energetically comes back. So, yeah, that has to be a factor in it. So, what I'm saying is, the remote view group right now is everybody in one group. It's gonna go. It's gonna filter into two or three different separates. Absolutely, um, absolutely. But it's a lot of fun. It, there's a game. There's a game aspect to it when you reveal the target. Everybody's just you know high fives. So it's a lot of fun. That's awesome, Karen. Do we we have some questions, right? Yeah, let, let's take some. Let's take Loris. She says, uh, when you are a child, can ETs appear as evil entities such as an evil witch? Um, that's a great question. And I got to say from everything that I know, the answer is yes. So oh. they can, there's a few things. So even, even the, you know, the, even the military, even the, even the soldier, the U S program that takes you with the ET access to that level of tech, they put screen memories back in you so they can make you remember you see them as a witch or or something else um there have been witnesses a friend of mine is a mufon guy in michigan and he said there's many 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 witnesses that see an e they'll see an et walk right through their neighborhood in broad daylight and they'll see it as a cloud of ga a fog a localized fog the size of a car that just walks right across the lo it's it's an, it's a way that they hide themselves and it's an so et so Tony, when you're saying they're putting screens, what you mean is they're putting like glasses on you for you to see, uh, you, you to see them like a witch or like a cloud or suggested into your directly into your mind. So a hypnotic wow. suggestion directly into your mind, like a slide reflex. So and then every time you see an ET, you kind of have a you kind of have a reflex where you oh I don't want to think about that right now. I don't want to do that right now. So yes, they absolutely. The the government does it. They're doing it when you watch the Super Bowl commercials. You know, they 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 train us sublim subliminal messaging and subliminal programming is perfectly legal. So we, everybody thinks it's not legal that they banned it. It's not. They they repealed the law six months later. It is perfectly legal to put in any frame of media subliminal programming. In fact, I work with it in the. I'm researching it for the learning software. There is a version of it that you can have subliminal programming should you agree to it. Um, but it's very easy to do and it works wonders. You can create subliminal stuff for yourself to quit smoking or, you know, weight loss or just get into it. You can do, you can retrain your mind by doing it. It's super easy to do. And it's, there's, I think there's actually products you can go out there and give, you can make it on your computer to where you can type in what you want it to do and it'll flash it on your screen real quick and subliminally program yourself. So wow. it's everywhere. Subliminal yeah. programming is not to mention, everywhere. And it's effective. Yeah, not to mention the music, too. Yeah. Yeah. And well, it's the same. So the music is actually the mm -hmm. easiest one of them. It's easier to do it yeah. in sound <laughs> than it is in visual, as far as uh, I'm concerned. Yeah. But it's everywhere. Yeah. And the, I wouldn't have a problem with it if I, I wouldn't have a problem with some of the things going on that the government's doing if they were more trustworthy, if they hadn't sure. been caught in a million lies. You know, if, if they could just be have some integrity, they could they could run their agenda easily. But the thing is, they're all such bad liars. Yeah. And the people that are doing the programming are bad liars, too. So that's why you have to regulate your intake of media. You you do. You have to police it the same way you do junk food. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another question from Elena. Has anyone came to you that had an experience from... Porter India Missile Base. In the early 70s, my father, um, I think he said, has two weeks missing time that they shipped out, but he has the train ticket of the day of his 
and it stopped. So. Let me look where it's at. Have a peek at it because it's funny. We had a remote view of some uh, my lab activity, the Nike missile control site, C-47, um, very near there. Hmm. Let's see here. No, that's, oh, it's right there. It's right up uh, Chicago. Well, so it's right a hop, skip, and a jump from Chicago that has a huge, It's a, there's a chapter in my book about Chicago having a reptilian living there on top of one of the skyscrapers. Oh and so goodness. it's right, I mean, it's not far. It's like, what is it, a half hour? Um, so, yeah. Wow. Uh, and there's a lot of people that, that I've worked with a lot of people from Chicago that have breezed through there. What I'm saying is the Indiana University, I think it's near Champaign. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a remote viewing last night about activity and underground stuff there. So the colleges are involved. Wow. So remember that the major universities, not all of them, but they have personnel that are part of the satanic pedophile network. They're all in the colleges. The, the real power in a society is in the teachers. Yes. Is in yes. disseminating the knowledge to the teachers and yes. then the teachers to the people, because that's the real power. It, when you shut the TV off, the school has the school does it. So, so um, all of the universities are soundly infiltrated by by the military, by um, the military industrial complex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, yeah, I just watched it. Um, I just watched an interview. Even it's starting in Head Start programs. They're seeing it even in the labeling of the Head Start program, the advertisements and the logos and stuff. Wow. Here's another question. Okay. Is there anywhere that people can give the bits they do? Remember, maybe it could from an even bigger picture. So I have been working on it. It's been on a back burner. I just want to make a notebook that is a timeline book. Uh, you know, when you, I want to make a book, instead of opening this way, it opens this way. And so mm -hmm. you can draw a timeline across. And it's very easy, Heather. So the way I do, I use, I use virtual reality now in a lot of my, because I'm because I think weirdly, but in the beginning I draw a line across the bottom. I'm born here. This is today, and I go ten year increments and then five year increments in there, and I draw a line up, two of them, one line on the top and one on the bottom, and I draw up and go. This is what I remember, and this was around here, eighty four, hmm. and then this happened here. This was a ninety two, and draw a timeline, and that's where you put those bits. Put it in a timeline form so you can see it because you can't think about them all at once either. You don't when I you know. People sit down with me and it's a bottleneck. They they pardon my language, but they vomit all of these all of these bullet points out. And I go, wait, 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 wait. You have to tell me when so that I can put it in order. If you put it all, if I put all your bullet points on a piece of paper, it's nonsense. But if I pull it and put a date next to it, I go, oh, that was over here. And when you put it in a timeline fashion, those bits have an address now, and your mind can let go of it and you can think about new stuff. You have to. You know, it's oh. like the old, it's like you have to let go. You have to take the garbage out before you go shopping kind of thing. And so that timeline puts all the garbage thoughts that you don't know what they are or what they meant. You know that they're part of this on a timeline and that, that clears your mind to get more. Yeah. So the timeline is beautiful. It's, it, it was the most useful thing I've ever done. And uh, it's the first thing I could, I, I recommend to 100% of everybody. Yeah. I agree, Tony, because that's what helped me tremendously to get these memories that I've, that have come back to me. It's so important to set up a timeline and put dates if you can, and the age that you were and all of that. So yeah, that's brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. It doesn't have um, to be the end of the minute, you know, just, yeah. it works. I'm going to build a, just as a, like a fundraiser and a helper thing, I'm going to add, like, I'm going to build a book that has an example one and like, and it works not only for abduction and erased extraterrestrial, my lab, it works not not only for but just long term memories. Yeah. Your childhood. Yeah. Most most people can't remember their early childhood. Like, you should make a timeline of where you were and when you you should do it. And because you can look at your whole life in one go, and it's pretty cool. It's a great feeling, you know. So I think everybody should do that. Yeah, that's that's a great idea. I agree with you. Okay. Uh, any more questions, Karen? It's a couple. Uh, Tony's really already answered. Like, can people actually do twenty years back, or can they go and see what somebody else is doing? I think he's already answered that. And then this one, he had to. For the Federation ship, we did actually do it, and I I presented yeah. this at GTIC. Uh, 
was it last year or the year before? I forget which year it was, but it was in my slideshow. We, I said, I had the team cast and we we remote viewed the the Federation ship, and what we got was a ball. We had we had three separate people draw a ball with a stripe in it, mm -hmm. and I immediately sent it to Elena Denon, who I'm a, a dear friend, and I said, "What? Look at this. This is what the group got." It, it, the thing is, when you when you when you remote view a target that's unconfirmable, you're looking for overlap. Yeah. So they all they have is a is a six digit number, but if they all say the same thing, then that's good indication. Like that's a that drives a score up. So if they overlap, if everybody says there's a, you know what I mean? There's a basketball. I see a basketball, and yeah. you go, okay, that's weird. And then the next person goes, yeah, I see kind of a thing, a wall, and a basketball. And you go, oh, so there's a basketball laying there. So we're on we're on the data point now. We know we're hitting it. Anyhow, everybody got a ball, but Elena sent me back in one of her books. She has a a drawing of it, and it's more like a disc with 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 spears. The shield is the shape of a sphere around. She said, "You guys saw the shield of it." Yeah, it's awesome. So to answer your question, it was corroborating on all aspects. Number one, we were remote viewing it. We were we were all on the the team was on the same page and accessing data. Number two, their shield worked. And number three, they had the ring around the a ring around it. So everybody was everybody was right. The shield worked. Elena, the shape of it confirmed it. And then the people overlapping confirmed it. So so yes and no to answer that question. Yeah. No, you could not, <laughs> but yes, we did. Yeah, that's a good way to answer it. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Okay, any more questions? Since I no, but um, I mean, I want to say to Tony, I, I feel like he's got to come back on again. But uh, I did want to ask him if we do another show, could you do one and let's get Dan Winter on with us? I could see. I, I, uh, I, I, I just would. I think you two would just be a lot of fun to have both of you guys on the show. Can you imagine? Yeah, can you I imagine? I know. I, I can geek out on Dan Winter. <laughs> Yeah, Dan's one and uh, Dan, uh, like an interview with Dan Winter is like, he leaves you with homework. You have yeah. to write it down and go look up what he was talking about after you leave because he's so, he understands it and he's so fast about very advanced things. So yeah, it's, he's, it's a pleasure yeah. to, it's a pleasure to speak with him always. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you guys, this has been absolutely incredible. Tony, any other last minute thoughts that you want to leave or um, encouragement to our audience before we let you go? Uh, well, I'm looking at some of these things here. Um, some of them, what was my most profound recall? What was the most was being in love. I was madly in love in my 20 at the end of my 20 years. And that was very profound for one. Um, people have remote viewed my 20 and back. I have remote viewed aspects of it. And uh, it's, unsettling um to do that mm -hmm. uh and then before i go i would say this like the things that i'm learning and where i'm researching so it started out with my i got my memories back mm -hmm. and i wanted to prove it to people because the, you know you guys are all very gracious and very very supportive but there there is an element of the community that's very hawkish yeah. and and skeptical and i'm ready to, i'm ready to but you know what i mean like I, I said it the other day. Uh, somebody said I was selling snake oil, and I said, "Look, you know, you you don't have to like me, but you can't dis you don't have to believe me, but you can't dismiss me either. I can't be dismissed. The evidence that I've come up with cannot be dismissed. You have to you have to come up with a better answer than what I've got for my evidence, and no one has. Um, so there's that. But I wanted and that that path of finding that evidence of researching it has led me into the area of work that I'm doing now." with the remote viewing, with the education platform. And what I've been finding is sleep. It goes back to your sleep, the state of mind. It's all meditation, intention, and your sleep. And some people have medical problems with their sleep. They have reasons, but take care of your sleep more than you do. Take, I mean, really treat it like a ritual. Treat your, treat your bed at night like going to church mm. because you do your work in sleep. You do your work with a... In your life right now, on your phone, you've got uh, maybe a hundred, few hundred people in there, okay. And on your Facebook, I've got like eight thousand people in there, okay. And when you're on YouTube, you might have a hundred thousand people on there that you can talk to. When you're sleeping, you talk to creation. Yeah. Everything wow. you ever lived, all of it. So when you're sleeping, treat that like church. When you go to bed, treat your sleep 
like it's what it is and you're you are in that state of mind and that that you need it needs to have that kind of respect and they also the powers that be that want us to not succeed whittle away at our sleep as well they whittle away at our sleeping as well here you know, drink the coffee have some coffee before you know later in the night at starbucks go for it <laughs> and it's sugar and lots of sugar so you know they're trying to whittle that away but i'm saying you you are never going to be more connected with anything more than you are when you're sleeping wow that's so true Bam. That's so true <laughs> so true so true wow tony this has been incredible did you guys enjoy tony um he is like i said he is such a a brave so he has he's so brave to share these things th these stories this incredible information for which he has so much proof and yet he's very loving and he's very uh, uh encouraging people and wants to help people tony you are just amazing uh you're such Thanks. a joy it's so awesome to i just gotta say at gsic last year he had a clicker for every hug that he got, he clicked, click, click. Tony, I'm sure you're gonna have one this year also. Do you travel with that? Well, I got a hug, I got a hug spiel that I'm working on for the next G-Sick watch. It's gonna be great. My the the segue for people that were there that hugged me, I had 722 hugs. Oh. You know who was number one? You know it was a totally random, totally random. The when I walked in, when I got there from the airport and walked in the hotel. The first person I hugged that was number one was Elena Denon. Ran into her at the <laughs> second awesome. yeah. It was the craziest thing. So 722 hugs. I learned Crazy a lot enough. about it. Hugs are exhausting. Meeting people. Some people drain you. Yeah, yeah. Don. I think Don was avoiding me sometimes. I'm just joking. <laughs> just kidding. Um, hugs are draining. So people are at different frequencies and it drains yeah. you. And what I and here's what I know. I was exhausted. Uh, after the first day, I, I got to my room. I'm like, oh God, it does take it from you. But you know what that means? That means you can get stronger at it. Yes. Things that exhaust you get exhausted to get stronger, and so that means it's a muscle. Like you should hug people, and um, so I got stronger at it. There, it's a workout for me. I'm like lifting weights. Like I am gonna give some hugs, but I'm not gonna go crazy. Uh, towards the end of it, towards the Sunday and the Monday, people were interrupting me. Yeah. For hugs, like it got yeah. a little out of control. So I'm going to turn it down a notch. I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to turn it down a notch this year. I'm not trying to break a record, but watch. <laughs> I am actually going to shatter all hug records this this year. I think, yeah. <laughs> I'm curious watch to me see go. how. Yeah, I'm curious to see how you're going to do I've that. I got a plan. Yep. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Tony, you're awesome. You're so awesome. You're such a blessing. You're such a joy. You're so kind. You're so full of love. Um, that's what you know. That's what got me about you. You're just so full of love. You're this powerful voice of truth, yet so full of love and kind and gentle, like the big bear, big teddy bear. Um, and so thank you for being who you are. Thank you for coming on and sharing with us. You guys, thank you for being here with us. Thank you for your comments that unfortunately I didn't get to see. Uh, but, you know, uh, thank you for your questions. And please, again, um, if you enjoyed this, share this. If you know some people that you think would benefit from the revelations and the truth that Tony has brought, share it with them. Um, so thank you guys so much. Karen, any last words? No, because my microphone has been jacked up. <laughs> oh, no, no, oh, great. I can talk. That was good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, we want to have Tony back again. Um Look, we had a record number of people watching today. It's been great. We had over 100 people today on the show live. So let's do it again. At noon. May I say at noon, which is pretty yes. amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, we will do it again. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, guys. We love you guys so much. Remember who you are. Remember the power that you have in you. Remember to listen to that voice that always exalts who you truly are, that does not push you down, that does not break you down, but encourages you. We love you. Be blessed. Until next time. Bye-bye.